All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Your Adrenal Fix, where we teach exhausted and burnt out adults the truth about adrenal fatigue and fatigue and exhaustion in general, and how to get their health back. And I, this is actually part three with my buddy, Don Moxley. He's the director in applied science and brand development at Longevity Labs in the US. And he's dedicated to helping people live a vibrant, fulfilling life and using his background as an athlete and sports scientist instructor to help educate uh, people on the science of basically autophagy and longevity. And we got a couple of new things going on in Don's world. So I invited Don back to have a conversation and for you to listen in over our shoulder. So Don, thanks so much for being here once again. My pleasure, Dr. Joel. Love spending time with you. We're, going to, we're actually going to be down in uh, Florida uh, for Christmas. So uh, we will have worked our way from the far northwest. We were in Blaine, Washington about three weeks ago. And uh, I had I, I messed up because we got a picture up next to the, the it's called the Peace Arch, which right on the U.S.-Canadian border, right there on the Pacific. And then the next week I was down in San Diego and I was about an hour from the southwest border, but I didn't get a chance to go down and get that picture. But we, we, my wife and I are talking about maybe going down to Key West when we're out there just to go ahead and get the pictures in all four corners. Yeah, you'll have to go back to the bottom there in San Diego and get that one again. Just so yeah. you say you can prove that you did it. There you go. I mean, you know, that's the, it's all about proof, right? Yeah, you have to, you can't just say it. You got to do it. You got to prove there you it. Go. So, there you go. so we had a conversation a little bit before we got started about just how your life has changed. And in our last couple of interviews, you tell us about the different phases of your life and how you're headed into that sort of that last third or the, let's call it the, the back nine in terms of doing things differently and to your plan. Maybe we can start with that and then just springboard with what's new in, in education and what you're teaching. Back nine, but I'm playing 27 holes, Joel. Right, right. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yes. Um, well, yeah, it's um, it's been interesting. I don't remember when on our last podcast whether we had started our, our journey, but uh, back in uh, my what my daughter uh, was finishing up grad school. She was living with us. She moved out January 2nd of this year. Uh, by January 21st, my wife and I have sold our house. We bought a 42-foot fifth-wheel trailer. Uh, and we really started traveling in May. Uh, we just spent almost five months out West, uh, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Washington. Um, we're working our way back. We're talking today. We're back in central Ohio today as we talk to you, but Sunday I'll be in North Carolina. Uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be there for Thanksgiving. We'll be down in Florida for Christmas. And then we're going to start to work our way back out West. But we, we, we decided we wanted to go find our next home. We want to wake up in the morning and drink our coffee, looking at mountains. Um, but, um, you know, I didn't want to, I don't, I don't want to buy a home off of Zillow. Um, I want to go figure out where we're, what, you know, where, do, where do we find a spot that fix our lifestyle? So that's what we're doing. We're off on an adventure, trying to find, letting our next home find us. Right. And at the same time, it's you're, you're working as well. And yep. I think it's a really good segue into as we talk about stress and the impact that it has on the body and how we have the ability to determine if the, the, the stress is helping us or hurting us. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess it's a good sort of intro into what's new in your world. You go and you lecture for the company that you work for. And I'm sure you have new topics of conversation and new product launches. So let's get kind of caught up on where you are there. Yeah, the, the big thing that happened, uh, Joel, is that so we, we launched Longevity Labs a little over two years ago. And um, during that launch, there was a podcaster by the name of Dave Asprey that featured us and, and we took off. It was a really good feature for us. And um, when you, when you back then, when you subscribe to Longevity Labs, our product, Spermidine Life, and we can talk a little bit more about that because we've got a little bit more research along the way, but um, you got a, a, an invitation to have a phone call with me. So I wound up having telephone calls with, I don't know, 700, 800 people. Um, now, Asprey is a Aura Ring HRV promoter. I believe he's on their advisory board. 
And, and what we found, Joel, was probably 80% of the people I was talking to had aura rings or they were using some type of HRV uh, measurement device. Of those that had it, 80% didn't know what the hell to do with it. I mean, they, they bought it. They thought it was cool, um, but they hadn't quite figured it out. So this has been – and HRV is one of my specialties. That's one of the things I really zeroed in when I was a sports scientist at Ohio State. You know, we really were able to use it – as a tool to predict success. And it's, it's as much a tool for um, predicting health as it is predicting success. You know, you open the show talking about adrenal burnout. We have adrenal burnout when we have too much sympathetic stress. Uh, we're not managing it well. We have our adrenals that are overhyped and they, they wear themselves out. Well, part of that is being able to deal with adrenal stress, being able to drill with sympathetic, getting a parasympathetic boost. When we're doing that, our HRV measurements will improve. And, you know, that at the end of the day, that's what we're looking for. Now, here's one of the challenges that we have when we talk to people. A lot of people talk about struggling with sleep. Uh, they'll talk about not being able to necessarily, you know, they have a racing brain. There's a lot of things that go into this. Um, that we fix with things like meditation and so forth. Well, you know, when I left Ohio State, one of my, I, I actually moved to Florida and I worked in the cannabis business because back then I had a very good friend who I'd worked in a wearable company with who says, what do you know about HRV and, and cannabis or THC? And I said, I don't know anything. My athletes are all NCAA athletes and, you know, they, they, we, we kick them off the team if they test positive. Um, but then at the same time, the work we're doing, I'm getting calls from some pro coaches saying, Hey, have you looked at this THC thing yet? And I thought, okay, there's something here I need to figure out. So, uh, I went and took a, you know, dove head first into the deep end of the pot pool, uh, started selling weed in South Florida for one of the licensed, uh, uh, one of the licensed groups down there and, um, started learning and, and Joel, here's the first thing I learned. You know, I've taught exercise sciences. I've taught the exercise sciences for 35 years now. We have part of our central nervous system that's called the endocannabinoid system, internal cannabinoid system. It's part of our nervous system. Endocannabinoid system should be chapter two when we teach exercise 101. It should, it, it should be the second thing we teach because, you know, so much of exercise is based on, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to look pretty. I want to listen. Some of us are never going to be pretty, no matter how much we work out. Um, and I've accepted that. And my wife loves me for, for who I am and we're good to go. Um, <laughs> but I can't lose enough weight to become Brad Pitt. You know, just, it, you know, it's just not there. And, and in fact, losing weight's a bad exercise goal. It's a really bad exercise goal. We've been failing at this for decades, but what exercise does do is it triggers the production of a molecule in your system. That's called anandamide. Anandamide is a endocannabinoid. It's a molecule that your body produces, they call it the Zen molecule. It's a molecule that your body produces that improves neural communication and look and, and, and promotes parasympathetic tone. Um, so the reason you should exercise is because of a lot of longevity things, a lot of brain derived neurotrophin, you makes you smarter, but also you produce anandamide. Well, as we've worked for longevity labs and as we've looked at the role of spermidine in the autophagy pathways, what we've learned, you know, when probably the last time I talked to you, we were referring to spermidine as a calorie restriction mimetic. It mimics fasting. Well, based on some research that's going on that will be published by the end of the year, we're prepared to move spermidine down into the cell it we can now say that it is a key molecule in the autophagy pathway in the absence of spermidine you don't get autophagy it's not a stimulant it's a key molecule now what's that mean to what we're talking about today well what we found is that there are some essential molecules that we we adapted that we can bring into our system to help physiological processes this physiological process we're talking about related to HRV is being able to monitor sympathetic versus parasympathetic 
stimulus. We listen, sympathetic's easy to come by. You know, there's lots of paper lines out there. Most people are, 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 are pretty wrung out. And then when you, when they're not exercising, when they're not sleeping, when they're not doing the key things that creates anandamide, well, it, it starts to head downhill. You get, you get that cascading effect. Well, you know, the, my, the people at longevity labs came to me and said, so if you were going to create a nutritional supplement to improve HRV, what would it look like? And this is something I've been working on. You know, I, you know, I've, I've tried to give this recipe away many times to many manufacturers and no one really bid on it. Um, so when my company came to me and said, let's do this, I said, okay, let's get this formulated. So um, what we're talking about is a product called HRV plus um, longevity labs is launching a sub brand that's called mode and method mode method. If you go to mode method.com, uh, put your email in there and um, you'll be notified when we launch. We expect to launch the beginning of December. Now, anytime that you're launching new products like this, there's issues that go with that. So I can't promise it, but that's what we're shooting for. So if there's a listener interested in this, go to modemethod.com. There'll be a window pop up, put your email in, you'll be notified immediately. Um, and on checkout, when it, when we do notify you on checkout, there will be a code. Look at the show notes. We'll have a code for Joel that will give you a little bit of a discount too. But um, but modemethod.com and the product uh, is called HRV+. Plus. It is a combination of cannabinoids. So we use uh, CBD, what a lot of people have heard about CBD, but we use it in a much higher concentration than what most people are used to. What I believe is the really valuable molecule is CBDA. It's the acid version of CBD. It's what the plant produces. Um, you know, CBD is largely a byproduct of the cannabis industry creating uh, adult use rec products. It's kind of a byproduct of that. CBDA is what comes right out of the plant. And, and CBD does not bond to any receptors in your body. Um, it doesn't bond to CB1. It doesn't bond to CB2. I take that back. It does bond to some pain receptors, but it doesn't bond to any receptors in the endocannabinoid system. CBDA does. So CBDA is an active participant in, this, in the endocannabinoid system. And then we combine the cannabinoids with what's called a dietary cannabinoid that's called beta caryophylline. Uh, beta caryophylline has an outstanding profile of not just bonding to CB1. Well, what it does is it boosts anandamide, which bonds to CB1. It bonds to CB2, which improves inflammation and lowers pain, but it also bonds to a host of pain reducing receptors, lowers inflammation. It is a wonderful product. So we have this great combination. We call it a terpene. It's, it's, it's also been referred to as a, um, uh, uh, a dietary cannabinoid because literally it's so close to 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 this the the cannabinoids uh, chemically, um, but it, it's it's produced in other plants, so they don't call it a cannabinoid. Um, and then Joel, we take that combination and we put it into a DHA EPA omega three oil, but the omega three oil is also enhanced with what's called specialized pro-resolution mediators. S we call these SPMs. And an SPM is the biologically available omega-3 that resolves the inflammation pathway. So when, anytime that we have inflammation, it's going to lower HRV. HRV and inflammation go hand in hand. So if you have low HRV, you've probably got an inflammation thing going on. Now, how do you deal with inflammation? Well, we get our omega-3s up, first of all, because you know a lot of inflammation is the byproduct of too many omega-6s. We got to get them balanced. But we can go ahead and get some, and you usually have pain with that. So we're throwing a bunch of NSAIDs on top of that, which is not letting the inflammation process resolve itself because we're blocking too many pathways. Well, we're putting SPMs right in the product. Um, we're putting that finalized piece in there. Um, and, and the combination of the cannabinoids and the biologically available omega threes has turned out to be a pretty powerful tool. Um, you know, you've, you've been able to use the product for a couple months now. Um, we've had it out there in sample form with a lot of people. We're getting great feedback on sleep. 
um, literally the first thing people talk about is I took this and I slept like a baby the ne- that night. Um, and it's to the point now, you don't get that kind of a, um, uh, a, a Robitussin sleepiness. It's not that it's not that barbiturate based kind of sleepiness. You, you get a good natural sleep. You, you crash out at night. If you have to get up during the night, you get up, you can go right back to sleep and you wake up in the morning and you're not groggy. Um, so, and I, and I think what's happening here, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this is that we're really supplying the micronutrients that are necessary for the endocannabinoid system to operate appropriately, to, to, to re- restore homeostasis to our, uh, endocannabinoid, to our, 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 um, our, our, our nervous system, the portion of our nervous nervous system, the autonomic portion of our nervous system, establishing that back. So we, we've been pretty happy with um, our sampling program. We're getting ready to start a couple research studies with this, with a couple wearable groups. Um, so um, we're really excited about the product and how it's going so far. No, listen, that's awesome. Lots to unpack. I could see the different rabbit holes that you've gone down, Don, with the endocannabinoid system and the CB, CB1, CB2, CBD2. Or, I, there's a lot of science behind it, which I don't quite understand myself. And what I want to try to do is combine the how spermidine is now not just a, I guess it's really a cofactor, if you will, for, for autophagy. Is that accurate to say? We're we're calling it a critical mechanism in the autophagy pathway, and right. and, and where we go, go back ahead, to yeah. Joel, we did a we did a there was a study that was done in Austria. So if you take a mouse and you fast it, you get autophagy. If you take a spermidine knockout mouse and fast it, you get nothing. Okay, so by knocking spermidine out, out of the autophagy pathways in mice, it it totally it it rocked the system. Um, so again, it, I don't think it's fair to call it a memetic anymore. So that's been one of the exciting parts about, you know, our work with spermidine and, you know, listen, what, one of the reasons we're in this space, we had a lot of our users tell us they saw an improvement in their HRV with spermidine. Okay. And so, and when you look at autophagy and inflammation, anytime that you have high inflammation, you probably have low autophagy. Most of the time when we're able to boost autophagy, we lower inflammation. And that link of inflammation to the autonomic nervous system, to what we're measuring with HRV is interesting. So all we're doing with HRV plus is coming in the backside of that autonomic nervous system and making sure the basic micronutrients are there so your body can achieve homeostasis. So you get good sleep so that we can start this process of recovery so we can so we can lower sympathetic because anytime anytime we have bad sleep and we have uh, inflammation we have a sympathetic bump and your and your and your um adrenals are going to pay the price um the only way you can stop that is lower that adrenal stress increase the parasympathetic response and that's what we're trying to do with hrb plus yeah it's just interesting don how all of these longevity health optimization autophagy growth factors inflammation immune dysregulation they're starting to really become together like a symphony and it's not just throw the crap against the wall and just hope that everything sticks it's more done in a pattern or more of a i guess a orchestrated way and so i guess yeah, that's a I good think that's, question that's a good that's a great way to put it yep yeah so with that being said again just to summarize so we're looking at people that would have a lot of stress in their life uh, a lot of to-do lists a lot of um, immune challenges their certain rhythm and their day they're tired at during the day and they're they're up at night and they just don't feel healthy and ultimately a big part of that is because they're not getting into autophagy where that helps to recycle their cells and clear that out. And as a result, that can put too much sympathetic tone in the body, which lowers that HRV and creates almost like a a vicious cycle where the inflammation and it just feeds forward. So uh, I guess um, the question is how when you're designing the the studies or even just recommending to your your user or educating them 
are you starting to put together the orchestration down? Because I know, yeah, I guess that's the question we can go with. Yeah, that's that's hard. As far as orchestrating at an individual basis, Joel, it's difficult because, you know, listen, orchestration involves instruments. Instruments can be tuned. So you can play, if you're trained and I'm trained, we can take the same instrument and get the same notes out of it, okay? That's not necessarily the same with the human body. You know, you've got a set of genetics. I have a set of genetics. Your environment's different. My environment's different. And the same way the instrument may sound different, whether I'm in a room with a brick wall or I'm in a concert hall, there's certainly going to be a difference in environments. Um, so this is where we see um, HRV as a really important key molecule. It's a key indicator. I personally believe it's one of the most powerful key performance indicators there is. It tells you whether you have resiliency and you're ready for the stress that comes. So that I love that. You know, one of my other key performance indicators personally is watts per heartbeat. So I ride, a, I love riding bicycles. I've had eight knee surgeries, so I don't run anymore. Um, so I ride bicycles and I always ride, a. uh, so we have a, we have a, a Peloton in our rig. So we have a 42 foot fifth wheel. And one of the things when we decided on this life, we're like, okay, we have to have exercise with us and the hack. So you'll look over my right shoulder. You see my sauna, you look, you know, that on this side of me, you see my red light panel. You know, we, we designed our rig so that we could have these key pieces. So one of my KPIs is Watts per heartbeat. I know that as my wattage goes up on the on the Peloton and as my heart rate goes down at a given wattage, I'm getting the effect I want. I'm getting more power per heartbeat. My mitochondria are functioning. My red blood cells are there. My systems are developing. And consequently, there's an HRV benefit that goes with that, that when I'm at my highest fitness levels, I'm typically at my highest HRV levels. Um, so again, HRV watts per heartbeat for me, these are key performance indicators. They're, they're, you know, I used to use key performance indicators back as an athlete, you know, how much can you squat? How much can you deadlift? Things like that. I don't use those as much. I make sure and deadlift and squat and do those things. Um, uh, but I don't necessarily worry about, is it 800 pounds or is it 700 pounds? I don't, I don't worry about that. In fact, I haven't been under a bar that had more than 300 pounds on it in many, many years. Um, so, um, but my KPIs is my HRV climbing because what I know as we age and as we move closer to death, as it, when it relates to a uh, health span, HRV drops right prior to death, HRV will be zero. Um, the more I can push my HRV up, the farther I am away from death. Right, right. And I think that's a good point, Don, in terms of not micromanaging the less important data points and seeing the more important movers of the of the needle. And I, I like, so back to maybe that aura ring user that mm -hmm. really didn't know what to do. Now they are armed with, I guess, with longevity labs uh, products in the spermidine and in the, HRV plus division um, to take the thinking out of it and take the supplement and see the results. Is, is that accurate? I, well, I still think you have to think, listen, it's, it's your body. You've, I mean, th th there's not a doctor out there that's brilliant enough to see you in their office once or twice a year and give you the kind of feedback that you need for, to maximize your lifestyle. This is a completely 100% self-driven process. Listen, you know how you work. You know what you like when you do on vacation. You know, there's certain things that you, you got to own your longevity. You got to own your personal performance. You I mean, coaches can help, but at the end of the day, you got to have your own performance indicators. And frankly, you know, when you have HRV working well and you go out and let's say you go out drinking with your friends one night, you're going to wake up and you're going to tank your HRV for a couple of days. OK, I have found following HRV is the best tool I've ever seen for people to quit drinking because alcohol is brutal. Um, you know, uh, with my athletes, we used to we, we would do 24 and 48 hour HRV studies on them. And I, I was able to demonstrate to my athletes 
going out and having four beers prior to going to bed cuts your sleep efficiency in half. Okay. So that four beers and eight hours of sleep was really worth four hours of sleep, which isn't enough. Okay. So uh, for the first time, we had objective data that I could show to my athletes. You know, listen, you go back to Rocky, you know, women weaken the legs, you don't drink before, you know, there's all these, these, these wives tales. No, out, you pay a price when you drink, period, end of story. Um, I have, it's, it's really, I, I hardly drink anymore. On occasion, I have, you know, I'll have something in an event or something like that, but I rarely drink alcohol anymore. Um, you know, the benefit of alcohol, they used to say, was in resveratrol. Uh, that resveratrol benefit comes in the first few sips, rarely found at the bottom of the bottle. Um, and, you know, and the price you pay with the alcohol is significant. Um, and, and I'll tell you the other thing, frankly, if I feel like I want to introduce some intoxication into my life on a night, I do it with cannabis. Um, I use cannabinoids because it does not crush my endocannabinoid system. I can, sure. I can, I can enjoy that. I can um, wake up the next day and not be hung over and um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I can wake up the next day, not be hung over and I'm able to function and have a good, uh, good response from it. It doesn't hurt me. Right. And we're talking about THC at, at this, at this level, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of THC, a lot of CBD and a little THC. Right. Um, I think right. that's, that's right. where my sweet spot's at. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I got you. So for those that aren't as sophisticated, they get a little bit paranoid because they don't want to necessarily have the negative stigmas or if there still is sure. with that, maybe sort of unpack that Don with the HRV plus and what CBD is. Cause I, I think some people still aren't knowledgeable about that. Sure. And that's a great question. So when, when the cannabis plant produces its cannabinoids, they, they come in two large groups. One is called THCA. That's the acid and, and THCA, when you decarboxylate it, when you heat it up and it loses the acid, it then becomes psychologically reactive. It will bond to the CB1 receptor. That CB1 receptor bonding of THC causes intoxication. That's how you get high. Um, now CBD will not bond to the, to the CB1 receptor. It, it, CBD won't bond to either CB1 or CB2 bonding. The CB2 does not create intoxication. It lowers inflammation. It improves immunity. It works in a lot of the same pathways that autophagy works in. Um, so when we've designed our product, we designed our product, there's there, it's made from hemp, which has to be below 0.3% THC by volume. So we, we, we pass all those rules. There's nothing in our product that will, that will intoxicate you. Um, and, um, but the, again, when people are using it, the sleep has been off the scale. It's, it's been, okay. you know, it's not a sleep supplement, but it's a supplement. A lot of people are using for sleep. Right, right. And just so curious. So let's say like, just for the argument's sake, if someone did have a dispensary and get THC and they took the HRV plus, the, the cannabinoids in there seem to cut somewhat of the euphoric intoxicant feeling of the THC? Uh, not, not necessarily. It, there's actually a thing with THC that's called the entourage effect where one plus one equals three. So you've got to be a little careful because everyone's different. Everyone's system's a little different. So what we recommend is that if you do use THC and you're using HRV plus simultaneously, be careful, figure it out how it's going to work for you. Cause that, cause entourage effect, it's talking it about potentiate, the, it could add a little more. It, to, it to could, the, yeah. it, you, you want to make sure it's not going to roll you up a little bit instead of roll you down. Um, right. So, so you got to pay attention. Anytime that you're messing with cannabinoids, you got to pay attention to that. Everyone's different. Um, right. And so their endocannabinoid systems are different. Right. And, you know, actually, I hadn't even anticipated talking to you about this, but this was sort of a, a light bulb that just came on. I remember texting you and asking your opinion on the, on the, um, was it the, uh, the CD8 or what is the, um, I forget what it's called. Um not the not the THC and not the CBD, but they have the CBDA? new derivatives now. What oh, is it? So so there are a lot of long chains cannabinoids. There's CBC, CBG, CB. I mean, so cannabigerol, cannabin, uh, cannabidiol. Um, 
we're, we're not playing in that space. Um, we have an extract that has a known CBD, CBDA, and beta caryophylline uh, blend. And those are the big right. three we're going after. Um, we, I, whether we go down the CBG or CBN pathway at some point in time, I'm not sure. We're certainly going to look at some other combinations. Um, we're working with, with some formulators uh, from across the country, looking at other terpenes, other plant terpenes and how they work. And, you know, there's some, there's some pretty interesting, like acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. Um, listen, if we can boost acetylcholine, that's probably a pretty good thing. Um, and you can do that with some terpenes. So we're exploring that. Um, it is not in this product. This product we have designed strictly for this HRV+. Plus. Uh, and, and again, we get that with the CBD, CBDA, and the beta caryophylline all in the omega-3s, particularly with the SPMs, the Specialized Pro Resolution Mediators, which I'm I'm really excited to introduce to a, an audience that just isn't that familiar with them. I love SPMs. They're wonderful tools. Um, yeah. So we're excited yeah. to get it in the product. Yeah, for sure. That and the resolvents. I was just listening to a DNA te- uh, lecture by one of my mentors and they're going down the arachidonic pass, pathways and they're looking at platelet aggregation and thrombosis, thrombro, thromb, you know, thrombrosis and just having um, an upregulated stress response when you get these exposures that you tend to put more inflammation into the bucket than, uh, than your counterpart. And I think that that's what you're seeing nowadays, Don, is you're seeing a more favorable or unfavorable tendency when there's inflammation to yes. really be inflamed, right? Are you seeing that as well? I mean, worse well, than there's ever been. That's what we're talking about. I mean, so that arachidonic acid pathways coming from omega-6s and, and listen, our inflammatory pathways are critical for six, uh, they're critical to life. Okay. You know, if there's an assault on a cell, either from an infection or from a virus or from physical damage, you need those cells to go into an inflammatory process. They swell up, they get heat, there's temperature, they try to kill any internal bodies. The problem is we have so many omega-6s in our system that we overproduce omega-6 arachidonic acids. We have so few omega-3s in our system. Omega-3s are typically driving the resolving pathways of inflammation. It's the same enzymes. So when you take an NSAID, uh, when you take an Advil or something like that, it's, in, it's, in, it's interfering with the COX-2 enzyme, which is lowering that, that inflammation pathway from arachidonic acid via omega-6. But at the same time, it's interfering. That same COX-2 pathway has to turn the omega-3 fats into the resolvents. So, you know, listen, we, we know there's pain. We know people are using NSAIDs. By getting the SPMs into the product with the omega-3s, all we're doing is we're boosting that resolve inside of the inflammatory pathway, which is going to yield an HRV response. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's, you, you can, you can also promote it. Are you promoting it as a pain reducer as well? I mean, it could no. be produced. Yeah, no. The FDA, the FDA would probably frown on that. Um, oh, okay. So right. no, it's, so it's a, it's a, it's a tool designed to raise HRV. What we're finding with our early studies is this, and you can't fix HRV unless you fix sleep. Okay. If I don't, I don't care what you do in the rest of your life. If your sleep is broken, HRV is really hard to fix. It's critical. Um, so one of the, this has been one of the byproducts. I frankly, I didn't expect this when we designed the product. It's a, you know, it's a, you know, listen, even a, a blind squirrel trips over a nut every once in a while. Um, and we kind of done that here, but the, the sleep that has come with this product, we have absolutely been thrilled to death with. And, you know, Joel, it makes sense. If I want to raise HRV, I have to get sleep fixed, have to no two ways about it. Um, and then you add in the other things, you add in the other nutrients, you add in exercise, you add in quality light, all those things that come with longevity and performance. And, and, and we get, we get resolution of the inflammatory pathways, which is going to inc- lead to a parasympathetic tone, which is going to raise HRV. 
Have, have you looked at the stacking of which the spermidine to see if there's like a study between, you know, those we haven't that gone there it? yet. Yeah. No, that'd be no. interesting to know. Right. I absolutely agree with you. I th listen, there's a lot of these things that, again, the last time we spoke, we were referring to spermidine as a calorie restriction mimetic. Um, right. in the, in the line of resveratrol and metformin and rapamycin. Well, now we're looking at spermidine as a key molecule. Okay. Again, I, I'm, I'm sure if you took a spermidine knockout mouse and you gave them rapamycin, it, there, there may not be autophagy there because the spermidine is not in the system. So, you know, if you're using rapamycin or if you're using resveratrol or if you're using metformin, um, in the absence of spermidine, uh, autophagy is not improved. And, and again, that improved autophagy is going to lower inflammation. It's going to, there's going to be an improved, um, there's going to be an improved HRV response just from that. Um, right. but we're coming, we're coming back with the HRV plus as another tool to put in your personal toolbox to, uh, you know, deal with this, the, the fact that we live in aquariums, we do not have our, our, the environments that we live in, are not consistent with the evolutionary pathway we took to get here. So part of what we have to do is we need to make sure we've got those key nutrients available so that we're able to deal with the stress that comes with life. Right. Absolutely. So as far as just a nice perk and plug to the longevity labs is at no further uh, investment, did I get a increase of the reformulation of the higher potency in the spermidine. So maybe get a, a little oh. idea as to why that came through. Yeah, yeah we're excited about that. So uh, again, we're always, we're always innovating. Uh, this is important for us. So what we've learned when we first started selling spermidine life, we sold it in a one milligram dose. So two tablets, one milligram. Uh, that's the reason we did that is that's what the European Union told us we could sell. Um, along the way, we've been, we've done more studies to show that it's a safe supplement. We've, uh, we've done safety studies to 20 milligrams a day. Um, European Union has approved us to sell up to 12 milligrams a day in products. Now, we don't have anybody asking us for 12 milligrams. We do have people asking us for uh, six milligrams. So we have a six milligram spermidine life product. Um, you can buy 10 day versions of that online or through a physician, we sell 30 days because we think, listen, that's a big step up. We need, we want to make sure there's a healthcare professional in the middle of that decision. But more importantly, we, we our technology for extracting spermidine from wheat germ into what we call our Selvio product. So Selvio is not just spermidine by itself. Right now, if, if you go to, if you go online and search spermidine, you'll see a lot of very high dose spermidine products online. Um, the problem is most of those products are synthetic spermidine, um, which have never been tested in humans. It hasn't been done. Um, when you're working with spermidine life, this Selvio product not only has the spermidine that's in it that we talk about, but the other polyamines are there too. Putrescine, spermine, they're all there and they all work in concert. So, well, as we've improved our ability to extract Selvio, we've been able to refine it more. So now we can get one milligram of spermidine rich Selvio extract into one capsule. So our product went from a one milligram a day dose to a two milligram a day dose. So if you buy spermidine now, it's going to be a two milligram per day dose. So we've been, we've been able to double the, 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 the dosage. We've got some other stuff coming too. So we have the six milligram products available. Uh, we're going to have some others coming along. So we're constantly working to lower the cost of our product and improve the, um, the uh, lower the cost of our products and improve the um, the concentration that you get as we move through. Right, and I think when you and I talked at one of the lectures you were giving, you were saying to like just sort of try a little bit at a higher dose for sleep. So I'm imagining that the higher concentration and the six milligrams coupled with HRV plus. I mean, are you seeing are you seeing those? We haven't we haven't gone there yet. Haven't we haven't gone there. Them. We yeah. haven't gone there yet. Yeah. yeah. 
It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, listen, it sounds like it, it makes sense from my point of view when I work with people that are exhausted and burnt out and their, their you know, cell danger is, is pre- deciding what's most important for survival, um, for short-term survival and not really concerned about long-term um, circadian rhythms upside down, um, hormones are in balance, insulin's driving up mTOR, they're not able to get into autophagy, they're inflamed, and obviously their HRV, their paras- their sympathetic tone is, is dominating, and they're wired and tired, and they're not sleeping, right? So right. being able to unpack all of that is, is really the goal for, I think, providers and nutrition formulators alike. And, and listen, what we've learned is that from a spermidine standpoint and autophagy, there's not enough spermidine in the diets of Americans with the food that we consume to support the level of autophagy that we need. That, that's pretty clear. Um, we expect spermidine to eventually achieve vitamin status as an essential nutrient. Um, so, um, you know, listen, this is, this is one of the byproducts of industrial farming. The nutrients kind of drop out on those. We get a lot of plant, we get a lot of proteins, fats, and, and carbohydrates, but we don't get the, the micronutrients. And spermidine has just turned out to be one of those micronutrients that's critical, that's not in our industrial produced uh, food source. So you have to supplement right. it. Um, and at the same time, when we look at the environment, are we getting effective levels of these molecules that support our stress, our autonomic system? Um, And again, what we've learned is that cannabis produces this wonderful molecule, CBDA, the acid form of it. Uh, CBD is also good. It does some things, you know, it does some things that are very positive, but you got to get the dosage higher than most people are consuming it. Um, And then you roll that in with the beta caryophylline, which is a dietary cannabinoid, which has that, which, which enhances a whole nother set of receptors. Um, it's been a great combination and gives you the ability to get into the fight, you know, and again, it's a, we use the term fight, which is probably not the right word because a fight would be sympathetic, but the process of trying to get control of your autonomic nervous system, get control of your lifestyle so that you're able to get parasympathetic tone. You're able to balance sympathetic versus parasympathetic. You're able to work your way through the cycle. Um, these are all valuable tools. Yeah. Just curious, as an aside, have you listened to polyvagal theory or read the polyvagal theory book? I have not read that one yet, but you, every time you and I talk, I wind up with a new book on my shelf. It's, so thanks. Get, read that one. I'm just, fin- I'm just finishing it now. And it talks about basically polyvagal three branches. So they have the unmyelinated primitive reptilian below the diaphragm part of the the vagus they have the myelinated above the diaphragm um, and then of course they have um, the the sensory which is 80 percent right so Mm -hmm. it talks about how if you think of it from an evolutionary standpoint with the reptilian unmyelinated motor below the diaphragm this was mainly um, for fainting or feigning or avoidance. Um, and then the next one in the hierarchical range was the sympathetic, um, which was to, you know, fight or flee and, and get out of the way. But then the more mammalian one, which is the myelinated above the diaphragm, was more to once you felt safe um, and you were able to regulate the sympathetic, um, that was allowing you to really have community bonding because mammalians we thrive in in connection and purpose and Mm -hmm. really really interesting which is a good segue in terms of i think if you can't just think of it as checks and balance like autonomic sympathetic parasympathetic yes you can but thinking of it in terms of that hierarchy don and i think that for people that would take this product and want to improve their sleep and want to improve their HRV, I think a lot of it on its own, like you can't just, you, you have to think still, like you said, right. but I think a lot of it also comes down to, you, you know, relationships and having your creature comforts and having your infrared behind you and your saunas and being with your wife and being community and feeling safe. 
I don't know how much that's educated on longevity labs, you know, I guess modus operandi. Is yeah, that, yeah. It's, it, it hasn't been, but what's been interesting for, and, and, and this is a story I've told before. I don't think I've told it on your show, but um, when I was with the wrestling team at Ohio state, I walked into practice one day and one of my wrestlers, this kid's a multiple time, all American sh should have been a national champion, but they had, during the COVID, he was number one ranked guy during the COVID year when they canceled nationals. So top level wrestler. And he said, coach Moxley, he said, uh, he said, what would um, video games do to my HRV? And I said, Luke, I said, here's the problem. I said, your brain doesn't know if that's a real gun pointing at you or if that's a fake gun coming at you through the screen, your brain just knows gun. Um, so he said, I had a hella, what is the, um, there's a video game. I forget the name of it. Fortnite. Um, he said, I had a hella Fortnite session and my sleep was horrible. And I said, there you go, buddy. I said, you're starting to figure this out. So, you know, I th listen, these are the challenges, these screens, listen, there's, there's benefits there. There's costs and benefits to everything. You know, you and I are using technology, to communicate over distances, you know, listen, I would love to be in the room with you down there in Boca. Um, but I can't be, I'm, I'm up here in Ohio right now. And we're using technology to build community and to talk to our, our tribes. Um, but, um, but you know what, when it's time to go to bed, you got to turn the screens off. You got to get the blue right. light down. You've got to, you've got to anticipate this. And again, when you throw in the micronutrients, uh, that are necessary for autophagy to work, for um, our endocannabinoid system to adjust itself, to get parasympathetic tone. You know what? That's the good thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just a segue too on that book. It talks about the difference between play with people and play with games. And there is no like really looking at someone's face and trying to discern if they're you know, friend or foe, and it right. doesn't help us, you know, bond. And uh, it's interesting that you said that. Um, also, too, I think, like, to your point, um, it's not, I mean, taking the supplements and having the proper lifestyle, getting your circadian with, rhythm and trained and not having, you know, major demands and not enough supply. Um, I guess the easy thing to do is get out of the way of nature, right? And give it what it needs and get, 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 take away what it doesn't. Yeah. Listen, there's, there's no pill I can give you to take that's going to be able to adjust the effect of playing Fortnite from uh, 10 o'clock until two in the morning. Okay. Right. Just, okay. When now there's some times you've got to work from 10 o'clock to two in the morning, hopefully listen, shift workers, we know how difficult it is to be a shift worker, how throwing that circadian off. It is, it is so hard to combat the effect of that. Um, but if you're not a shift worker and you have a choice as to whether you play the video game from 10 o'clock to two o'clock, you have to learn to make those choices. And, and, you know, these are, this is just part of you owning your life and making those decisions. Yeah. It's interesting. Like the, the, I think the art of doctoring has gone out of the window with the time constraints and what insurance pays for and it doesn't pay for, but even in a quick little consult with someone and I start asking them what's going on, it's not really rocket science that their demand is so high and their supply is so low. It's not. And you need to look in the mirror and decide, okay, what can I start to slowly make some changes that I don't expect to add another supplement to or a crazy whiz banks dietary approach to and, and expect to, you know, be a magic wand with that. I mean, look in the mirror and find out like what you're doing. Last thing I'll say about the polyvagal too, Don, is it is very physiological, almost it is primitive and reflexive to have some of these withdrawn or freeze or just do a, 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 a life-saving behavior with a major stress or trauma. And it's not so much the trauma that messes them up, it's the emotion associated with that tra trauma or right. the, the, the meaning they put on it, right? Because right. what the author was talking about is if you can educate other doctors on not making their behavior wrong, 
Like it wasn't wrong of you to faint or just to go with it or let yourself be traumatized because that was what your body inherently did to, to save itself, to preserve its life. And you need to celebrate that and not put an emotional um, attachment to it. Absolutely. And then that way you can start, a, you can start from there in terms of getting back integrated and feeling safe instead of feeling what you did was wrong. And I think, I mean, it's just a little side note on sympathetic parasympathetic, you know, I, I absolutely agree with that. And I, I, I use an analogy from time to time. If you're born in a rattlesnake pit, the only way you, sur you survive is through hypervigilance. That's, that's all there is to it. Um, but if I move out of my rattlesnake pit, into a, a field of bunnies okay i'm still going to be hyper vigilant we know there's a drop of anandamide in the amygdala we know that hyper vigilance and listen we may not be born in rattlesnake pits but we create trauma in the, in our lifestyles at a level far beyond whether it's sexual or poverty or abuse or physical trauma 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 is real it adjusts your your it adjusts your um your nervous system it adjusts your autonomics and again this is the difference you and i may be the same age we may have similar uh you know similar education similar behaviors but based on our trauma that we've come through we have to do things differently it'll affect us differently and again no judging is listen this is one of the cool things i've learned the top uh, of the top three religious orders going on when we look at Christianity, Judaism, or or um, uh, uh, Hinduism or M Muslim, they all reject judgment. You judge. There's a cost to it, and and you have to recognize that. So this is one of the things I love about good religion when it's practiced. Now, growing up a Southern Baptist, we you know we judge quite pretty well. Um, and frankly, I've moved away from my religious practice to a more spiritual practice. You know, I grew up Southern Baptist. My wife grew up Catholic. So between guilt and judgment, we had them covered. And a big part of what we've had to do is move away from some of these religious practices and focus on our spiritual beliefs, um, which means rejecting the judgment. Um, and that's a big part of it. So I completely agree with you. Well, I mean, it's apropos to, to what we're talking about, really, because we're talking about heart rate variability and you have the ability to not be dominated by stress hormones and be very adaptive. And that doesn't come out of the bottle or a diet, but it comes out of your thought processes, your emotions, your support system, yep. your mindfulness, all of the above. Yeah, great conversation, Don. As far as what's next, I always like to ask, what's what's next for you or what little life lessons have you learned since the last time that we've talked? Well, so what's next for us is we're getting this project, project launch. You know, we're trying to get our company through Black Friday, you know, so we're a week, you know, we're a week out of Thanksgiving. So Black Friday is a week from now. Um, we got to get through that. We're going to launch uh, Mode and Method and HRV Plus the beginning of December. Uh, in that time, uh, I travel to I, you know I travel to several conferences and speak and present at a couple conferences. So we're going to get this launched. But at the same time, I'm starting to research other terpene based uh, therapeutic properties. You know, so we're working with some other companies. Uh, we're working with some other formulators to look at, okay, what can we do to improve the human experience? Um, again, I've talked about this before. I have a personal mission of helping individuals understand change that leads to uh, the reduction of suffering and the promotion of, and the betterment of well people. That's kind of what I do on a daily basis. So, you know, a big part of this, you know, understand, you know, when, when, when Daniel Dietz called me two and a half years, almost three years ago and said, what do you know about autophagy? And I said, I have a passive understanding about it. He said, what do you know about sperm? And I'm like, never heard of it. Um, so, you know, doing that dive into spermidine and understanding it at a molecular level and partnering with a company that uses such great science. One of the things I love is that we do have some competition out there in the market, some of it legitimate, some of it illegitimate, but they all mention our research. You know, it's, it's our research that's driving this. 
Um, right. and, and so I, so that's an exciting place to be, you know, we're launching mode and method. We're taking, uh, what has been kind of a life's, um, uh, venture. It's a life's adventure of me, you know, being in sports science, understanding HRV, being able to apply it, moving into cannabis, getting a, a good, uh, education on cannabinoids and terpenes and the endocannabinoid system, how it works. And now being with a nutritional company to bring a product to market has been wonderful for me. I mean, I mean, how does it get, how does it get better than that? Um, so we're going to continue that. Um, and, um, you know, if I showed you my desk, it's a mess because it's covered with different things that we're trying to figure out. And, um, uh, that's what I get to do. No, it's awesome. I, I appreciate your, your help. I think, uh, I have an intro, like in terms of, uh, a suggestion for maybe research design, which we could talk about afterwards, but always grateful. And it, and it's mode method, the internet site, but it's mode and method, the company, is that correct? It's, it's mode and method. The website is mode method.com. Um, mode method.com. Right. I'm not sure if we got and or not, but mode method. No, there's no and. Certain, there's yeah, no we'll, end, yeah. We'll certainly no get end. you there. And again, fill it in. We're going to do some research projects. Uh, so we're working with a group um, called heads up health that are able to aggregate um, wearable data. So we have at least two research studies. And I don't know if you, there's a guy by the name of Joel Jameson out there that's a real silverback in the HRV space. Joel and I, when we were up in Northwest Washington, Joel and I got together for lunch. Joel is a, 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 a pilot. And he, we went to lunch. He said, meet me at this airport. And he flies in in his helicopter. And we get his helicopter and fly over to another airport. So that was certainly interesting. Um, but working with people like that, it's just been, it's been pretty cool. No, it's great. It's great to see the, the field of longevity and health optimization advance and use more natural things that were once tabooed at some point. Now we see that they, they aren't so bad. So Don, I appreciate it. We'll think about part four, or this is part three. So we'll think about part four at another time, but Thank, and then I'll give the listeners my code so that when they go into that site, they'll be able to, I'll put that in the show notes and um, uh, wish you and your wife and your family the, the most success going forward. Thanks. And if people have questions, if you go to the website, there's a section there where you can ask questions. Um, you can get a hold of me. Um, so as we work our way through this, uh, we're pretty available. So if you have questions or things like that, you know, reach out to us, let us know. Awesome. All right, Don, you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Joel. We'll see you. See you.